Hello everyone. Today's video is an extremely important one and one I've meant to make for a while. You know, I started this channel almost two years ago now and my entire purpose then and now is for education and reassurance. So today's topic has somehow become controversial when it shouldn't have and there are no scientific controversies around this, only ones on social media and the spread of a lot of misinformation. So I wanna make sure you have it clear that this particular platform is actually not intended for discussion for arguments and for controversy. This is just a chance for me to share with you my heart, my opinions, and some actual scientific hard facts. And I have made this video today from parental requests. So please receive this in the spirit of which it's intended, which is to educate you and to reassure you about a topic that is very important and very near and dear to my heart. So let's jump into it. If you like this video, we would just encourage you and appreciate if you could like it and particularly if you could subscribe. Thank you very much. So today's topic is human papilloma virus or HPV and I will just refer to it as HPV from this point forward. HPV, it turns out, is quite an evil little virus that can cause lots of different sorts of cancers. Now, typically in a common infection with HPV, it self clears. The patient often doesn't even know that they're infected and usually it's gone within about six months from the initial infection. When you have someone who has never been sexually active, let's say you have 10 of those, eight out of 10 will be exposed and infected with HPV within the first five years of becoming sexually active. So eight out of 10 times that young person will become infected with HPV. Now I have so many points I wanna share with you. One of them is we absolutely encourage the use of condoms. You know what I always say, if you need to prevent pregnancy, you need to be on birth control pills or some other specifically designed for contraception method like an IUD or an implantable um, hormonal birth control. That's the best for preventing pregnancy. The be but it does nothing for infection disease control. Of course, the best thing for preventing infections is a condom use. Here's the problem with HPV, however, the particle size is so small that the latex condom is not effective at preventing uh, transmission. It's not very effective. So of course we still endorse and use condoms, but it's just not gonna provide as much protection as it would against say gonorrhea or chlamydia or other things. So HPV actually prevents, it presents to us an excellent case for abstinence, for waiting until marriage, for a lifetime monogamy, for selecting out your um, sexual partner so very, very carefully. And obviously that's what I encourage all my children, all my teenage patients to do, to postpone sexual activity, um, to limit your total number of lifetime partners, to decrease your risk of cancers caused by HPV. So here's possibly what's happened through the years. I'm not sure how this has happened. Somehow, when the vaccine that helps prevent the cancers caused by HPV, Gardasil, was initially presented, it somehow got accidentally misunderstood to be a sexually transmitted infection vaccine. Well, mm, let's think about what we're preventing here. We're preventing cancer. So what it actually is is a cancer preventing vaccine. And I know so many people who would gladly contribute to research, helping prevent cancer, helping treat cancer, would march in a parade, would donate to a fundraiser. And here we have one of the modern miracle achievements of cancer prevention, and they refuse to let their children receive it. So I think there have been a tremendous amount of misunderstandings through the years, and I wanna to try to address some of those. One of those we already discussed, condom use, even if it's 100% is uh, every single time, which is usually not the case, uh, it, it still doesn't prevent HPV infections. Uh, HPV infections for women worldwide causes uh, 300,000 deaths from cervical cancer. That's a problem. In just the United States, between 35 and 39,000 uh, men and women have cancers caused by HPV. So it, this is significant. Also, a lot of people don't believe that their sons need the vaccine. Oh my goodness, yes. One out of three cancers caused by HPV is in males. So it turns out this virus can infect the whole entire oropharynx tongue, lips, gums, throat, 
Uh, it can infect everything in the genital region, males and females, and perianal perirectal regions can also have cancers caused by HPV virus. And they can also have uh, genital and perianal warts. So that's obviously not very pleasant and can be a big problem. So HPV disease is very real, it's very present, and I'm not sure people realize the burden of HPV disease that's out there. Now, some people will even say, and I've heard them say this, this is insane by the way, oh, my teenager is very afraid of needles. So uh, he or she possibly, we just can't do this vaccine because that would be one more needle and we can't handle one more needle. Guys, if your child goes on to develop cancer, they're going to have to get a central line in chemotherapy and radiation and invasive uh, treatments for cancer. And even if they're not ultimately one of the 39,000 that die of it, they would still have a horrible, horrible time battling it. They're gonna have way more than a little simple needle prick. So I hope you understand that's a very silly argument. Here's another argument that we often hear, and it's, it's misguided as well. Oh, you see, my daughter is actually perfect and she will never become sexually active. And so I asked them if they're, maybe if she's planning to be a nun, literally, seriously, and they say, oh no, we're not actually Catholic. Well then how is she never gonna be, oh, oh, I mean, she will wait until she becomes married. And that's fantastic. And uh, I am one of the very few people my age, I think, who have actually practiced lifetime mutual monogamy. It's not very common, it turns out. But I would still wanna protect myself against a potentially fatal disease. And here's the other problem with that argument. So are you also raising her future husband that you know that he's had no exposures? Because anything she's exposed to with him, she's now exposed to all of his previous partners as well. Remember that statistic, eight out of 10 patients or people when they become sexually active are exposed to HPV and infected with it within the first five years, primarily in like the 15 uh, to 20 year old age group that we're talking about there. So unless you can guarantee that your daughter remains not sexually active till marriage and so does her future husband, I don't know how you could possibly do that, and that you would guarantee that he never cheated on her during marriage, and that you could guarantee that she never strayed, and that you could guarantee that she was never sexually assaulted, and that you could guarantee that he never passed away and she had to remarry. Well, I don't know how you could do that. More power to you, but it's impossible and it's ridiculous. The other thing that's happened throughout these years that I have become so frustrated with is I don't know if you even know this, but North Carolina law states that providers, healthcare providers, cannot give confidential information about a teenager to the parent without the teen's consent in two areas, reproductive health and mental health. So if your patient had a well visit with me and they did screen positive for depression, but no thoughts of self-harm, there is, I can, if, if they are planning self-harm, I'm, I'm allowed to share it, obviously, because that's a, a safety matter, then I'm not supposed to share those results with you. And that's kind of tricky, because I need you to be more safe around your home. I need them to get counseling, I need, you know, so a lot of times I'll ask the teen if we can just share a little bit of that with their mom. But the other area is reproductive health. I cannot tell you, and this is not a HIPAA breach, because I don't have any specific names, numbers, dates of birth, or anything like that. This is a generality. But in all the years I've been practicing, which is a ton, I can't tell you how many times I have a patient's parent who says, oh, we don't need the Gardasil vaccine. Oh, well, we sure would encourage you to get it because it could prevent cancer one day. And they say, oh, but my teen, she's very innocent. She's very naive. And they don't even know that she's been sexually active for years. It's so sad that they're not communicating. I do encourage the teenage girls that I see as patients to make sure their mom knows because if anything does happen, an infection or pregnancy, their mom's gonna usually be their biggest advocate and helper throughout that situation. I've even had teens, it turns out I'm kind of naive myself, I've had teenage patients who told me they weren't sexually active. And maybe um, you probably don't realize this either, if we prescribe birth control pills, and it truly is many times just to control really uh, out of control periods to help decrease the flow and the severity of cramping and the irregularity and that sort of thing. So we do that all the time. Well, insurance rules mandate that we also screen at least once yearly for gonorrhea and chlamydia. And so I've even had patients that I believed them. You know, we often will ask the parents to step out, attempting to get more honesty from them, but it doesn't always work, obviously, because I have had patients who would say, oh no, I'm not sexually active. And then their screening test would come back positive, And I would think, well, good grief, you 
fooled your mom and you fooled me too. So there are many sexually active teens out there of which the parents are completely unaware. So if you are holding back on a life-saving vaccine for your teen because you believe them to be innocent and not involved in any sexual activities, you're making a sad mistake and I would truly encourage you to get it. Let's talk about some specific things. If your child gets the Gardasil vaccine at least one dose before the age of 15, it's a two-part series. If you start the series after 15, it's a three-part series. The reason we start giving it with the routine adolescent vaccines at 11, and it can be given as young as nine, is because we're more likely to see them at well visits at that age. It's because they can make antibodies against this well before they are exposed to it later in life. And we just get more compliance when they start at the 11 year well. I will have some parents who want to postpone it till the 12 year well check because they have to get their Tdap and Minactra at the 11 year well. And that's okay as long as you make sure you actually get it at the 12 year. And then we could do the booster six months from that, or you could just wait to the 13 year well. As long as you're compliant with your well check visits, that would be fine. So I hope you guys are seeing that. This is an important issue. I don't know why Gardasil in particular got so kidnapped by the anti-vaccine movement and, and its reputation <laughs> so marred uh, for no good reason. Uh, there were so many objections initially that the CDC investigated again even after tremendous amounts of pre-marketing and post-marketing surveillance and safety studies and efficacy studies. And sure enough, it's fine, it's safe. So I hope you've also learned a bigger picture that you, we try to and have to practice evidence-based medicine. If you're making your medical decisions based on the friend of a friend who heard about a cousin of a friend's neighbor who got mono because they got the Gardasil vaccine. Okay, that's ridiculous and that's stupid and you don't catch a whole different virus, that's Epstein-Barr virus, from a vaccine for this virus. This virus is inactive. It will give you neither HPV nor EBV nor any other virus. It will just help your body produce antibodies against this virus to prevent infection and the ultimate cancer that can result from the infection. So if you're basing your decisions on hearsay and gossip level, basically, that's not a good way to make decisions. You need to learn how to either read studies or trust somebody who knows how to read studies like your pediatrician. So I, with all my friends who are pediatricians, want to encourage you to get your children, both males and females, completely vaccinated against human papillomavirus because it's really a bad player uh, for multiple kinds of cancers in males and females. Thanks.